So in this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at using plastic mulch to suppress weeds in a cannabis field. We can see that in the image right here where plastic mulch is being utilized to help cut down on the weeds in between plants planted in the same row. We'll look at this in more detail here on this video. All right, let's get into using plastic mulch to suppress weeds in a cannabis field. Well, first off, the benefits of plastic mulch. Why, do, why would we want to select this in the first place? Well, it's a long-used option worldwide since the 1960s, and it's used mainly with, mainly with animal, annual plants. The goal is to provide weed control, improve plant growth, modified soil temperature, retain soil moisture, increase yields. And of course, this applies more than just to cannabis. It can apply to other plants as well. Sometimes just uh, having onions grown in plastic mulch can really help increase uh, their growth compared to those that might be right next to them in a row that is left with bare soil. Uh, plastic mulch in related to cannabis production specifically. So when we're looking at plastic mulch, it's a good option if you're starting with clones due to their poor ability for cannabis to initially compete with weed species. Also, the use of clones does not allow for the use of post-emergent herbicides. So that's another advantage or reason why you may want to consider plastic mulch for your in-row weed control. In addition, plastic mulch can increase the soil temperature, allowing for early plants to establish quicker. Uh, warms that soil up, gets that root uh, zone temperature a little bit uh, warmer, a little faster, which can be particularly important in the early part of the season. Now the challenges with plastic mulch, because no system is 100% perfect, uh, plastic mulch, the removal and disposal can be labor intensive and also expensive. The general cost of the material is also potentially cost prohibitive to some growers. The estimated costs of up to $534 per hectare in horticultural systems with a 2.4 uh, meter spacing between bed centers uh, was observed. We also have to consider the disposal of that at the end of the season. Uh, plastic mulches uh, has uh, waste management challenges associated with it. So like, where do you put all the plastic mulch after you're done with it? Yes, it's hard to remove, but then you remove it. And the question is, now what? So what about recycling our plastic mulches? Well, about 90% of used plastic mulch uh, that is uh, used in the United States mostly ends up in a landfill, stockpiled, or sadly burned. It's often not recycled due to the limited sites and contamination during usage and simply the high cost of transport. We can see some sources listed here, as well as you're always welcome to look in the description for a link to sources listed by each slide. Now, before you install plastic mulches, growers should be committed to a drip irrigation method with a fertilizer injector, something that's going to make your overall system much more efficient. Since the soil will essentially be sealed, and I put sealed in quotes here, under plastic irrigation uh, it will very likely be needed. So here we see the drip tape, here we see the drip setup, because you're kind of sealing that environment out, and that's a great thing. It's going to be very efficient, and the water that is in there, but installing that drip system will ensure you can irrigate your plants. In addition, side dressing with nutrients is also impeded with plastic mulch, so having a fertigation system is also advised. However, the soil should still be amended if needed based on a soil test before the mulch is applied to the soil. Don't assume you're just going to cover it with mulch, add a fertigator, and it'll be all set. If the soil does need amending, you are recommended to do that before laying your plastic mulch. Now the options when we're looking at plastic mulch, uh, we want to consider the width. How wide will your rows be? Common widths of 36 and 60 inches, but others uh, options may exist and may better be a better fit. Texture, want slick or embossed. Typically, the embossed plastic has a visible pattern on the surface. It is more resistant to damage due to punctures, wind fatigue, cracking, uh, than compared to non-embossed mulches. Also, uh, linear low density has a slick surface appearance, but may have a linear pattern with the goal to reduce the chance of tears while in use. Another option you want to be concerned of is the thickness. Thickness varies from 0.6 mil to 2 mil or greater. Be sure to use an adequate strength material. And typically a 1 mil to 1.25 mil embossed plastic is, a, is adequate for most applications and is recommended despite potential increased in cost. Don't want to go too cheap uh, because you'll be just dealing with a pain and a mess to deal with it. Don't want to go too... Um, thick because you, if you're only using it for one year, you don't necessarily need to incur that much of a cost. 
Now we also have color choices when it comes to plastic mulches. Some of them get really crazy. Uh, the most common color option is the traditional black color, but there are other coloration options. Some growers um, have the opinion for, uh, option for white and black, uh, white on black, which may be used with either um, side facing upwards, depending on the specific need. So keep in mind how you utilize these mulches, mulches can also impact potential plant growth. Clear mulch is great for warming the soil, but has limited weed suppression abilities, so keep that in mind. Aluminum, or, or uh, silver, but not gray, uh, reflective mulch reflects solar radiation, and research has shown it, it can repel aphids, which can spread viruses. It can also have a cooling effect on the soil. And keep in mind, that's aluminum, that's like a reflective mulch. Aluminum or silver is not the same as a gray coloration. Uh, some growers get the gray and they think they're getting this nice uh, aluminum type color because it has a sort of kind of gray appearance, but you want aluminum or silver. You want that really highly reflective uh, material and be sure when you're applying this, it's a cloudy day and still you are highly recommended to wear sunglasses. It's very, very bright. Other cold mulches, as we see here, uh, may affect plant growth in a positive ways, but more research needs to be done in regards to cannabis. So I can see it's a whole wide range of colors. Traditional black or silver is typically what's recommended. Lastly, when we're looking at the equipment to go through, with our, if we're looking at committing to plastic mulches, you want to be mindful of your field prep. Uh, so you want to make sure your field is all set to go before you're considering doing mulches. You want to have a mulch layer with drip irrigation wheel. We can see that right here. And then ideally at the end of the season, a mulch lifter can make the laborious task of removing that much, much easier. So again, you can see there's a lot of equipment, especially on the large scale, a lot of commitment to this mulch, uh, but there is a lot of equipment simply because it is pretty widely used for the reasons mentioned here. But also keep in mind some of those drawbacks to see if is this the best fit for your environment.